Okay, Fight fans, we have a special guest on the line. I'm excited about this guest because we don't hear much from him. It's the president of the WBA, Gilberto Mendoza. What's up, brother? Thank you for right, How are you? Thank you Good. for the opportunity. Hey, Barak, you know, thank you for having me here. You know, um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of your fan. I'm always just checking out what oh, you do. Appreciate, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate I, I sometimes, I sometimes get yellows because I don't get the attention, but fortunately, I got it now. <laughs> well, well, listen, I, I'll say well, this. Um, Gilberto is definitely, out of all of the sanctioned bodies, he's the best dressed. If you see him, he's always dressed correct because we always pay attention to fashion on this show. But listen, uh, pleasure talking to you. And I like the fact that we're, we're hearing from a different sanction of body. You know, um, and oftentimes, you know, people don't, you know, they hear from, look, I'm going to say the name. Mauricio is a friend to the room. So we talk to him often and he gets to speak about the WBC. But we don't hear you know, intricate details about the other sanction of body. So I want to. I'm excited to ha have you here to give you the platform to do so. First thing I want to jump into is this. Um, you know, obviously there's negativity a lot around sanctioning fees. You know, Mauricio talks about, you know, the, the good that the, that organization does. Um, can you explain what the WBA does outside of, you know, the belt and, you know, accepting sanctioning fees? Do you guys do any humanitarian work or anything that people don't know about? Of course, yes. You know, actually, um, right at this point, we have a lot of distractions. I have a lot of lawsuits, a lot of things that, are, that, I'm, that I'm attending right now. You know, I'm just facing a lot of, of legal situations. But further than that, you know, um, we have uh, something called WBA Future Champions, which try to give opportunities to amateur boxing. You know, we had like uh, before the, the pandemic broke out, we had an event before the Olympics where we had approximately 11 teams you know colombia we had uh, venezuela we had puerto rico we had argentina facing each other you know uh in it was not only boxing because you know we also did some some courses for training we also did a little bit of uh, charity you know for some uh, low-income places that don't have boxing and they use boxing as a tool to keep away kids from problems or conflicts you know, we, we, we constantly have this this kind of thing. The, the, um, the charity part is called WBA KO Drugs. We recently had one in Argentina. Actually, it was kind of ironic because uh, Jarrell Miller participated, but he came back, you know, after, after you know, the, the suspension was lifted. Yes. You know, we had him in one of our shows. It was a two-night show. Uh, the main idea of this um, charity sh events is that besides giving something to back to the community, we also, you know, uh, focus on giving opportunities to fighters that are not well known outside the United States, and they don't, and they don't have the backup of big networks. You know, at least, you know, it puts in, it puts the eye over there. Actually, I will mention an Argentina name, which is, which you're gonna listen from him in the future. It's called Mirko Cuello, who's developing as a fighter, and I won't tell you who will be the next Marcos Chino Maidana, but he has all the tools to be. And Chino Maidana came out of one of the shows. Actually, I'll go back and tell you a couple of names, Venezuelans, because that's where this KO Drug show started. And I'll explain a little bit more about the KO Drugs later. Uh, Edwin Valero and Jorge Linares came out of one of, one of these programs. You know, wow. wow. So that, that's we were, amazing. Yeah, those, those, those times we were located in Venezuela, you know, uh, our main offices were there. We had, uh, you know, we had the support. We, we kind of joined the community with the mayor of a city that gave them space. And we basically um, rebuilt the place to have a boxing gym. And that was where they have it, you know, professionals and amateurs could go there. And uh, that's where basically our sanctioning fees go. Besides, you know, we can't take away conventions or award dinner. Going back to the KO drugs, you know, that initially was the idea just to provide, uh, you know, certain places in Venezuela that were low income places, that were, there were a lot of crime inside, that we gave sports as a tool. We didn't have boxing those days. I don't know how familiar are you with, with baseball, but in one of those KO drugs, we had a baseball like event, you know, because there was baseball, there was a marathon, there was uh, volleyball, basketball. Uh, I think they were uh, track and field a little bit. There was, a bit, but in places where the government 
couldn't you know have access to it but we did have access to boxing because at the end of the day we had um somebody involved in the, in the sport but that's basically what we do understandable understandable it's a lot of things that these sanctioned bodies do and i'm glad we had gave you a chance to say at least a portion of it okay now i want to um talk about regis progray great fighter former champion 140 pounds he was on our show recently saying he doesn't understand why he's not getting a shot at the WBA title right now. Meanwhile, I believe you guys have him ranked number five, but there's a number six fighter that's about to fight for the belt. That's Akhmadov versus Alberto, who's the number one guy. So he, we need some clarity on that. Okay. Yeah, I know, you know, he might be right, but, you know, as you know, we are trying to reduce titles, right? We have this policy. We have been working, actually, for the past year. You know, next week's going to be a year since we announced and we, redu you know, we took away all the interim titles. Interim. Yeah, and then now we're working very hard to reduce, um, you know, double championships. You know, actually, uh, I, I hope by December we're going to have only four divisions with two with two titles. And about progress, he might be right commercially, you know, at some point, but legally and with the eliminators and the decision that we took in the past, unfortunately, he got he, he was off. And you were saying number six, that that ranking that ranking was modified. So right now. Um, Puello is going to fight Admedov, who's number two, who legitimate, who legit had to be number two the, the time because he fought twice for eliminators. Mm. That was overlooked, so we had to correct that. He's fighting for the vacant title that Josh Taylor gave. And then we had, um, I think it's uh, Barroso, when we yes. had multiple champions, Ismael Barroso, he was, he was the mandatory for Taylor. So Taylor being out, we had to clean up all the mess that was left there. And unfortunately we're being, you know, some kind of harm because we are not going to have progress back there, but we gave him a chance to expose his case to a panel. This panel made a recommendation to the championship committee and the championship committee made the decision at the end of the day. And the way the ranking was, you know, was in, the, in that order. Unfortunately, Regis couldn't make couldn't make it. You know, we had a lot of legal issues. We had, a, we had mandatories that we approved in the past. But I, but, I, but you know, this is the times I think, you know, we take the correct decision, but it's unfair to a boxer and perhaps to the division. You know, um, you mentioned yeah. multiple titles, and I'm, I'm assuming that you're meeting in the same division, meaning a super champion and a regular champion. Is that what you're referring to? Yes, correct. Yes. So, so you're we're going to have four divisions that are still going to have uh, handle that handle the WA well, like that till the end of the year. I plan okay. in the, you know, in 2023, in the first half of 2023, I'm planning to, to get rid of those four, oh. four championships. So, so eventually we'll only have one champion at WA, not regular or super. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. But what, what I meant is that those divisions I'm, I'm thinking about is heavyweight because it's complex. It's complicated. You know, you have, you have Usyk, Joshua, Fury. That's, those are the names everybody wants to see. Yeah. Right. And it's going to take a long time before, you know, before we can clear it up. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can put our mandatory there. Right. Then you have Canelo. Canelo is the biggest star in boxing. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult, you know, to force to fight David Morel to, to box um, to, to box Canelo. Fortunately, I think he wants to fight. Uh, th there's a war of wars between uh, him and, and, it, and I hope yeah, that fight yeah. happens with Morel. Uh, that fight happens because yeah. it, it, it would allow Canelo to only have at least to reduce one mandatory instead of having four he's going to have three if we, you know if we can make this happen with mauricio then we have um, um it's the lightweights you got we have, we have haney and gervonta that i think is a great fight if it happens right. and ryan is also in that division his, his name is sounding there i don't know what's going to happen and the other division that i'm missing right now wait i forgot one I don't know exactly which one is the one I can recall, but those are the the three that I was thinking. You know, which light one? Heavyweight was it? Light heavyweight. Right. But light heavyweight has only one champion. Then okay. super middleweight. The, right. Perhaps maybe middleweight where we have. You know, we already put it like a deadline. Depending on whatever happens, September 17. It's Triple G. If he wins, I, I guess he's going to stay. So Lara will have to face whoever is the leading available contender. That's what it is. Right. Right. At this moment, we're talking about Chris Eubank. You know, if that that is a good fight anyway, and if it's not Chris Eubank, we're talking about Jaime Munguia, that which is a great fight as well. Right. And that's one thing we're focusing, and uh, and then then if Canelo, I mean, if uh, if Triple G loses, 
people say he's going to retire, but then he will have to come back and defend the the middleweight championship or or vacate it. It's up to him at that point. People have been complaining about the belts for years, you know, about having so many belts. What was the straw that broke the Campbell's back for you to decide to do this, Gilberto? Well, there were two sides, right? Because we had we had the multiple belts because fighters wanted to pay for the multiple belts and promoters want to fight for the multiple belts. You know, mm -hmm. that happened. That was one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is they have media like you guys, mm -hmm. all the rest, you know, the press, you know, YouTubers, everybody, you know, together, you know, uh, TV, you mm -hmm. know, uh, media, any media outlet outside, plus fans, they were complaining about it. So we were like in the middle point. And at some point I thought, that I, and I went back to my committee and said, it is time to do it, but we didn't, we never enforced it. We kept just doing the multiple titles because we had like the market for it. And at some point, I think it was, it was a correct time. And that was one year, you know, we had a, <laughs> there was a controversy in the fight in Minnesota, you know, so that uh, brought up a gotcha. lot of people talking and it, yes. put, it put me some point to say, wait a second, this is, People are not liking this. We got to forget the other side, the, the, the commercial part, if you want it, or the market part. We got to forget it. And we have to try to clean the sport. We are close to being 100 years. This is a centennial year. We have to we have to push forward for it. And if we really want to make structural changes and see what really we do in the back, we have to start cleaning up in order to get all this destruction out of it and start seeing the WBA as the brand who can develop more than, you know, than giving back a belt respect for that brother respect for that thank you no doubt thanks for, for for clearing that up uh i want to play something i played for mauricio Suleiman and ryan garcia after the wane before he fought fortuna he sat down with us and i just want you i want to play this for you and i want to get your honest opinion now you guys put so much emphasis on these bouts man let them go they don't mean shit. bouts don't mean shit nowadays all, all that right, matters is ryan. about if i all right so if i beat Devin, yeah they're gonna say go fight tank but if i beat tank they can't say well they're still tight i mean do you nah, care man. i understand your position right, about okay. the so, so i wouldn't be proud to say i'm undisputed if i beat cambosis i'm not going to be proud of that i'm going to be proud once i beat everybody that's when i'm going to be proud that's when i raise my head up high i don't care that right, these so bells who, who do you, you know i'll just everybody? i'm going to describe this perfectly for you in like a, not a parable but a metaphor these belts have no substance it's like wearing a chain but it's not heavy it's not real throwing words you know <laughs> It, 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 you know what? When you were playing that, I, I just saw the belts don't mean nothing. It, it, it kind of got me back to to Colbert, you know. <laughs> and Chris Colbert, you know, he, he, he said that once before yeah. fighting Hector Garcia that the belt didn't mean nothing, and then he lost, and this, and the belts for some reason start meaning a lot because you're talking about a lot of history there. You know, like for example, my belt is a hundred years, you know, no matter what. I understand Ryan. I understand that he's in the top of the game. I understand he, you know, he could get an attraction. I think he's very positive for the sport. But he, but not every boxer is like him. <laughs> you know, a boxer needs belts at the end of the day. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, um, he. I think he got cut up in, in the moment. In the moment. In the moment. You know, I think he got cut up in the moment. I think he was pushing hard for the fight. You know, opposite from when I'm listening, she was asking me to be mandatory for your Bonte when you're going to beat Rolly, you know? So it's kind of like, wait a second, you know, I understand yeah, sometimes yeah. he's young. Yeah, the, maybe, like you said, maybe it was a heat of a moment. Yeah, he gets yeah. a lot of hate from social media because he's not a champion. So and, that was something. And, he and he's young, play. you know, he's young and and it, and, and kind of, he gets attention of what he has because he has another belt. But at the end of the day, if he wants to write his name on the books, which I think, that legacy cannot change in anything. He will have to have all four belts. And if and if he wants to prove himself in this current boxing atmosphere, he needs to win the whole the four belts, not only at lightweights, you know, on 140 and 147, which I think he has a lot of potential to become an all of You know, because if you see all the fighters won the four belts at the end of the day, you know, so it, it it's kind of kind of the heat of the moment, not to take it, you know, he I, I, if that was before the fight. Or after the fight. That was before the fight, yeah. Before the fight, you know. It, well, he, he, maybe he got cut up because, you know, but it's the heat of the moment, I, I, I guess that. You know, actually, Chris Colbert talked to me because we did, you know, we took we took a, a measure against him. We took him out. If you belts don't mean anything, just give him, 
just spot in the rankings right now, give it to another another guy. You know, <laughs> the kind of guy, you know. And that's what we did. We took him out of the rankings. But then he talked to me directly in the Brooklyn fight, in the role, and I said, okay, perhaps we made a mistake not contacting you before, but I, I just took your public record into what you were saying and we took out of the rankings. Hey, no, please, can you rate me back? Oh, that was gangster. Why you do Chris uh, like that? That was gangster, <laughs> girl, bro. Yeah, but, but honestly, you know, they're young kids. When they will be like 36, 37, when your skills are not there, then they need the belts again, you know? It's, they need that it's legacy, kind of, that legacy that carries yes. them over after boxing. And then, and then history marks them down as being a champion. I mean, you're talking, you have the BC belt that, that was held by Ali. The WBA belt was held by Ali, by Tyson, by Chavez. I mean, we have current legends, living legends like Canelo. He had all the belts in different weight classes. I mean, at the end of the day, your name is going to mean something. It's, I mean, you can't you know, go uh, sport. Uh, to add to that, oftentimes, you know, a lot of legendary fighters, even now that they still have the capability to go out and do meet and greets and, and meet fans, you know, they carry those belts. And, and that makes, you know, that gives it the bells and whistles that they need. So that legacy sometimes even feeds fighters later on in their careers because they can introduce a guy as two-time world champion, four-time world champion. So I think it goes beyond you know their careers there's nothing in boxing that holds more weight than being a champion and that's just point blank there are times when fighters are so famous and they've already accomplished so much blank they don't need to fight for a belt maybe canelo maybe floyd that's it nobody else in the world can ever say um i don't need a belt you know that's just impossible like jerry cooney was a, a great he's a great guy he was very famous at the time but i'm sure he wishes he won a title. He can never be introduced as world champion. champion. And all of these fighters get in here for that. I do understand there are the very, very few times a guy who's already been a champion doesn't really care about the belt. Look, there's one reality that is all around the world. Recently in Argentina, in this KO Drug show that we had, charity event with a boxing club, amateur and professional boxing club, which is run for free in a very difficult place where there's a lot of crime as well. And the fighter who runs the, the program, he takes his free time and his money from his job, you know, from his nine to five job, to used to teach his kids. And when I came in and opened the belt, the faces of those kids and girls, because there was boys and girls, they changed. I mean, it was like for them, just having that picture with the belt and feeling it, it's like you know an experience they will never live again and sometimes you know we when when boxers are in the top that you were saying they forget a little bit where, where you're coming from you know and th and this is a reality because they're not those kids that sold the bills those days the eyes you know the way they pop the way they felt you know at least allow them to have a dream hope it doesn't yeah. mean they're going to be champions but it could mean that, you know, they're going to be a different people in life. And that's one of the things, you know, that you got to carry with that, with the heritage of that. Yeah. I mean, I think there was a, a, a small window of understanding what Ryan was saying. Ryan was saying, hey, I just want the big names. And one or two of the big names don't even have belts. And that's what he should have said. He should have said, hey, you know what? I want Javante Davis. He doesn't have a belt, but he has a big name. I want uh, maybe Lomachenko. He doesn't have a belt, but he has a big name. And if I beat those guys, I become great. That's very true. You know, but normally, great fight. Oh, no, all the time. Anybody who's ever been called great in the sport was a champion. Yeah. I mean, Look, yeah. that's all. That's and it's every, in every sport. I mean, if you're a, a ball player and you don't win the, you know, the World Series, you don't feel like like something is happening. Actually, you know, I bring up, I, I like too much baseball. Juan Soto is my example, you know, the <laughs> Washington National. He said, I want to win. I just don't want money. I just, I mean, yeah. I want to win. I want to have a ring, you know, in this case. It's different. It's different in those sports, though. Like, we could say Charles Barkley is great. Never won. You know what I'm saying? It's it's kind of different in those sports where you don't really have to win a championship to be great because it's not really all up to you. You can be a great player, but you don't have the support you need. Yeah, you but just can't, you can't think of one all time great fighter who's never been champion. Yeah, it does not, it does not exist. It doesn't exist. No. They're not in the books. They're <laughs> yeah. not in the books. And there's a lot of countries that have 
people's champion, but never had the belt. And so that, yeah. me, that, that, that then it took them to where they had to be. Well, listen, Gilberto, it's been a pleasure chopping up with you. Uh, thank you for being a guest on the show for the very first time and look forward to chopping it, talking to you again Anytime, in the near future. Yes. President of the WA, Gilberto Mendoza. Thank, thank you. you.